we are on row 39, I think. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 32, 4, 6, 8, which just means 39. Chain three in front. And then six in the front. It does not meet this. We're making another one of these lines. So now we're going to put seven in the back. Make sure you're getting through the windows properly so that everything's lined up. You don't want a curvy, curvy sonic screwdriver. It has to be nice and straight. You can count them if you like, but if you're just going by visual cues, like I said before, it's making the same thing as this line. So it just goes one extra on each side and then back to the front stitches. So make sure you're going through the right holes, otherwise things get wonky. Then you can count if you like. We've got five on this side front stitches and then our end stitch is also a front one. So. Three, four, five, and the front one here. Now normally I put stitch markers along the side of my project. So I would have one down here saying it was window 20 or row 20. And I don't know why I forgot, I guess just because I was so excited to get back to the project. But I'm going to put one here at 40. So we do our chain three and we do our one in the back, making sure, of course, that these little tails are where they need to be. And then I just take a stitch marker. You can use pretty much anything, but I just use these little plastic things. I go through the window and that's how I count my stitches later. I'll know that that was window 40 for the rows and it goes starts here with two you start at the bottom two four six and you can count every gap so the main color is that's what you're counting and if you reach the top then you know if you're doing an accent color it has to be an odd number so we are on row 40 and we did our one in the back then we're going to have four in the front. So this one is not the same as all the other rows, which is so exciting. We get to change it up a bit. Two, three, four. And then we're putting eight in the back. So make sure everything's lined up, of course, because we want it to look good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is this one here. Then we are just putting five in the front again. One, two, three, four, five. All right. One in the back, of course, we know those lines on the edges. And the end stitch. Row 41. Chain 
and three, of course, we're already stuck in the back. So sometimes it feels like it's on the side, but if you actually straighten things out, it's on the back. Then we have five in the back, making sure we get the, all the right pockets and all the right stitches. Two, three, four, five, then seven in the front, so make sure everything's lined up. It's this stitch here that you're going to want to use. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So it's the same, it's the same box there. Then we're back to a back stitch, which has to be the tip of this one here. Make sure it's in the right side of the windows. We're doing six in the back now. Two, three, mm, oopsies, four, five, And sometimes these ones can get in the way. You want to make sure that final end stitch is not going around any of this blue. Oh, look at that. So pretty on the front. Now we're at row 42. Chain three. One in the front. Five in the back. Then we're putting one in the front, it goes right on that outermost edge. And six in the back until we get to the other edge. We're just putting one in the front again for that edge and then four in the back before we get to our final side. In the front of course for that borderline and end stitch in the window. Row 43, of course, must start with chain three in the front to keep our lines straight. Then we have six in the front. Mm, my yarn did weird. Let's try again. There we go. Then we have seven in the back, so it's making that line to be visible. Each stitch is either hiding or showing the previous row, right? That's the point of all these stitches. So it depends on if you're looking at the right side or the wrong side, and whether you want that stitch to be shown or not. It's much easier for me to just think about, I'll just draw the chart and then follow the chart rules and then when I write them out, 
I don't have to worry about which side I'm looking at. I can just read it off. So we get to the, the edge there again, and then five in the front. And our end stitch goes in the front as well in that final window. Row 44, of course we're looking at the wrong side, so the accent color ends on the back. And our stitch has to not go into it. We're just going to blue into blue and white into white. Oh, there's then we have four in the front. And eight in the back. Make sure everything's lined up. It's this window here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and eight, that final one. Then we have five in the front. Make sure you're all pulling everything to make it line up. Two, three. Four, five. One stitch in the back. There we go. And the end stitch on the side. Row forty-five. One, two, three in the back. If everything is flattened and straightened, it's in the back. And this first stitch here is in the back. We're going to do five of them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Then we have seven in the front. Lines up with this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six in the back. Two, three, four, five, six. And our final stitch is also in the back in that back window. Row 46, one, two, three. One in the front, six in the back. Stitch number six is that top one there, right in that corner. 
Then we have six in the front. Then five in the back again. So it's that top corner. Two, three, four, five. Of course, we know the front one to lock it all together. Oops. There we go. Bring it back to the front and the end stitch. Round row 47. The chain three is in the front, of course. Then we have seven stitches in the front. Five in the back. Six in the front. That goes right in that corner. We got everything straight. Two, three, four, five, six, and in the front. Wrong side, chain three. The accent color is there, out of the way. That first stitch is always going to be in the back, locking all the layers together. Then we have five in the front. And six in the back. So make sure that everything's lining up when you go to get that one. Six, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have six in the front again. Then we put that one in the back and our end stitch. Chain three, it is in the back. We have six in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
and we're going to have five in the front. It goes into those ones that are already there. So it shouldn't be too hard to get them in the right windows this time. Then we're going to be back to those seven back stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And our end stitch is also in the back. Just like normal, we're going to keep that accent color tail and working yarn to the front. And we're going to start with our chain three. One in the front for those border lines. Then six in the back. Feels very familiar. Then we have six in the front. Again, you want to make sure that all those windows are lined up so that you're getting your stitches nice and straight. They're not going to be twisted into the wrong spots. Then we have five in the back. That stitch on the front to lock everything back together and our end stitch on the side. Now we're at row 51, chain three in front, and then seven stitches in the front. Then five in the back. Oops, sorry. My yarn got a bit funny there. Then we're going to put six in the front making sure that your windows are lined up. Four, five, six, and that final end in the front stitch Looking at the wrong side, we got to start with chain three, of course, and one in the back. That is how most of my patterns will do. You can get very familiar with that. And then five in the front. Six in the back. Make sure that you're 
keeping everything straight here. And then we're back to six in the front again. Then we have, whoops, my yarn. Get back on there a little, there you go. One in the back and our end stitch right on the side. Back to our accent color. If we straighten everything out, you can see that our chain three is in the back and the next stitches, six of them are in the back as well. I thought about putting music where I'm so quiet and I'm just counting stitches in my head. But I thought that if I was actually trying to watch this video and do the pattern, I would rather listen to my own music on low. And then you could still hear my voice if I'm talking, but you could listen to your own music. So I didn't put music. Let me know if that was a bad choice, okay? If you want to hear some elevator music, I'm sure I could find some. Then we are going to do five in the front. and seven in the back. stitch is also in the back there in that final window. Back to our front. Let me just move my mouse. So the white tails needs to come to the front. These ones are going to go chain three. One in front. Then six in the back, of course, if you don't want to count, you can sort of look at the picture and it's just going to line up with this. It's the same as we just did, which to me feels a little bit boring. I usually like to do more intricate patterns, harder patterns. I would say this one feels quite easy because it's very repetitive, but to me that actually makes it harder because my brain wanders and then I forget to count and I don't pay attention to the stitches. My brain says, too easy, can focus. So harder patterns are actually better for me. And if you want to count, you can. It was six in the back, six in the front, and then five in the back when we get this one done. So you can count if you want, but I think I'm just going to keep going because we've done this row essentially. We've done this row over and over and over. <laughs> And then you can also follow the chart if you're good at following those visual cues instead of counting you can say oh we have this row looks the same as the last row that final border line here needs to still be in the front and our end stitch on the side. Now 
that loop may have been excessively big. <laughs> I guess I get carried away sometimes. That's okay. We're on row 55. We've chained three in the front. We're going to do seven front, five back, six front. So we know that it's pretty much the same as what we keep doing. And then five in the back. You could tell me in the comments, like what kind of yarn you picked. Is it blue and white like mine? Is there a special blue that you found that really works great for the Doctor Who stuff? Are you gonna do all your Doctor Who squares different colors? Let me know. This is now six in the front here, so we're going to count them if we want. Three, four, five, six, and that final stitch here right in the front. Row 56, accent color is in the back. We're looking at the wrong side. And make sure that we don't get those tails in anything. They're just hanging out back there. Do our one stitch in the back. Then we've got five in the front. Then six in the back. Then six in the front. Our locking in the border, one back stitch here. And don't forget that end stitch. It's a very common mistake. People send me messages all the time saying, I messed up my pattern and I don't know where. And that's always one of the first things I look at. Row 57, we're using our accent color. Chain three. Oops, maybe I should chain. <laughs> in the back. Then six of them in the back again. Five in the front, just like normal. We're still working on this shape, just making it a bit longer. And then seven in the back. That is stitch number seven. Our end stitch is also in the back, but make sure that these are all sorted out so that you can get it on the proper side of that blue. Row 58, the right side is facing us. These accent tails are up in the front here. Our first stitch is going to be that front stitch that's nice 
borderline. And just like usual, we've got six in the back. Six in the front. What a surprise, hey? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then, guess what we have next? You won't believe it. Five in the back, just like mm, the last ten rows. I don't know how many it's been now. It won't be like this forever, but it is taking a long time to get to the next interesting bit. Then we do one in the front here. And a stitch on the side. This white one, I'll just bring it around the bottom so it don't be tangly. Row 59, chain 3 in the front, and then 7 stitches in the front. Then we have five in the back. It's like a windstorm outside. It's almost loud enough that I think you guys can hear it on the microphone. It is crazy. I think they're saying it's gusting to like 70 kilometers an hour. We live in Saskatchewan, so it is quite windy in general, but that is excessive even for here. And of course, we're going to finish this with six in the front. And then our end stitch will be in the front as well. So it's pretty much boring. Am I allowed to say that about my own pattern? I think this one's a little boring. I like the idea of all of them looking nice together. But the actual crochet for this one is just mm, boring. Now, this one, we are on row 60. We're looking at the wrong side. I like to keep that stitch marker every 20 rows to help me remember if I'm going to be counting them again. So I'll just do the first stitch here. We know that it goes in the back. And then I put the stitch marker. And I like these big plastic ones simply because they're easy to find and see. So now next time I count, I would have one down here too. It'd be 20, 40, 60 instead of counting every window, right? That's how I keep track. So then we have five in the front. Six in the back. And then six in the front again. Oops, I got a white. We don't need to take any white. I'm using blue right now. That and just before the end stitch, we have to lock in the borders with one in the back and then the end stitch on the side. 
61. Chain three and back. This stitch marker, he's not really in the way, but I just push him a little bit around. Then we have six in the back. Five in the front, we're doing the same thing. Oops, my yarn did a weird thing. Let me try again. And seven in the back. Our end stitch also in the back. Row 62, our accent color tails are at the front, out of the way. Chain three, and put one stitch in the front. Then six in the back. This is a normal, this row again, the same stuff. Two, three, four, five, six. Then we have six in the front, of course, it's the same. Oops, see, that's what I do commonly. Slow down, Ashley. It's okay. I can't slow down. I don't know how. <laughs> and our final stitches here in the back, of course. It's the same as you've been doing. But if you want to know the number, it's five. Five in the back. One in the front. And the end stitch on the side. Um, let go. Thank you. <laughs> and guess what we're doing? It's going to be the same thing. Over and over and over and over. One, two, three in the front. Seven stitches in the front. Mom's gonna get a little bit silly because she's tired. Yeah, I call myself mom. Third person all the time. I got three kids. That's who I am. But right now, I'm putting on my crochet hat and I'm still mom. It's strange, you never go back to being Ashley after you've been mom. Then we have five in the back course because we want to see that blue sonic screwdriver to make all the magic happen. Five, three, four, and five. Then six in the front. It's easy to count because we're just going to go until we reach the end. stitch is also in the front. Whew. 
We are on row 64, the wrong side tail, or sorry, the wrong side is facing us. This tail's in the back. We're gonna chain three. One, two, three. Put our first stitch in the back, keeping those tails out of the way. Then we have five in the front. Six in the back. So this is where counting comes in handy because you need to remember that that one needs to be in the back, right? Two, three, four, five, six, and six in the front. One, two, three, <coughs> four, five, six. Ooh, I'm feeling sleepy, guys. One stitch in the back. End stitch right on the side. We have another row that looks just like all the others, but spoiler alert, it's going to change real soon, okay? So maybe that'll give you the energy you need to push through and do another boring row where you do six in the back. Then we're going to do five in the front. Seven in the back. And our final stitch says EB, end in the back. There we go. This stitch changes, this row, the count, the numbers are different. Are you ready? So we still gotta make sure the tails are in the front. You know me, I've done that before. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. Um, the border lines are still the same. That goes through the whole pattern. So one in the front. Then we're going to put, oh, look at that, six in the back. Don't worry, the screwdriver part changes. So we're going to get exciting times here to change up our stitches. Three. Four. Five. Six. Then we're only going to put one in the front. It's the it's the outer edge line here. And we're going to put four in the back. So you remember how to do those, right? If it needs to go in the back, you bring the whole thing to the back before you yarn over. Then we're putting that line on the edge again, one here and then back in the back. Back in the back, 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 in the back. Okay, yeah, I am getting silly. Hope you're not offended, but I actually think it would be amusing if you were offended by my singing. I don't know. It seems like a weird thing to get offended over. Okay, so we only have five stitches. 
for this side of the back. And then we have to do that borderline again. So you gotta go in the window, grab your stitch, bring it to the front, then do your yarn over. And the end stitch goes on the side, just like always. Row 67, chain three in the front, then seven stitches in the front. five in the back so we're doing the same going through the back of this window bringing your stitch to the back and then we're doing front stitches again so that our square is mostly white. It's not a square, rectangle. Our Afghan square, I don't know, our piece, our project, this thingy-madooey that we're making has to be white on the outsides. And our end stitch has to be in there again. I feel like you probably know how to do that by now, but maybe you skipped the rest of the video. I don't know. This is the bottom of page three. We're going to chain three. We're doing one in the back. Make sure those white ones are out of the way. Five in the front. It's kind of the same because the sides are the same, but the screwdriver part gets a little bit different. So we'll get there. It's gonna be one in the back and four in the front. Then we have one in the back again, which is keeping the sides of the screwdriver and these ones are going to be in the front six of them one two three four five and six that stitch has to go in the back end stitch on the side. The joink. Row 69. We are still chain three in the back and then six stitches in the back. One, two, three, four, five, Then we're going to do five in the front. It is making on the wrong side, it's making these lines go up and down. And on the right side, it goes horizontally. So that's kind of a fun little tidbit of interlocking crochet. People like to say that, oh, it's reversible. This front and the back are the same, but they're not. The colors get inversed, but also the stitches. So this is vertical and these ones are horizontal. And that happens on the sides too, right? Yeah. Not, not that you really care at this point, but maybe it'll be fun information. So then we're back to those stitches that are all in the back to finish off the side. If you count them, that's two, three, four, five, 
six. Seven. And then that end in the back. You have to make sure everything's lined up. Now this sonic screwdriver gets really tall. Really, really tall. So here we go. Page four. We're at row 70, chain three, one in the front. Six in the back. Oh, I wanted to move that down. I feel like you can see it better when the table is underneath instead of the bottom part of this, but we'll see. Hopefully you are still able to crochet with me even though that was up. So it's just like we did before. We're putting one in the front and then four in the back to get us that line detail. Ashley. There we go. Then we're putting one on the front. It's the other side of the screwdriver. And then everything back in the back because our square background color is white. People sometimes get confused when you look at the square and it looks like this is the background color. So they think it should be the main color or the accent color depending on how the square is drawn. And it always really doesn't matter what's inside. It's those edge lines. The first line is the main color random tidbit that doesn't really affect this video, so I am sorry. I get babbly and I try to think of interesting things to say and then I realize that I'm saying them to people who that's not why they're watching this video, right? Oh, I pulled that one really far. 71, chain three in front. Then we have seven stitches in the front. Five in the back. Make sure you're going through the proper window, the blue windows, you know. I, I find this more interesting when the things are actually locked together. It gets a bit more fun. And six in the front again. stitch is in the front. Make sure it's on the right side of that blue. Back to the wrong side. Chain three. Put one in the back. Then we've got five in the front. One in the back, four in the front. Now 
and one in the back, the side of the screwdriver, just like before. And then these ones, six in the front again until you get to your end. One in the back and stitch on the side. Row 73, chain three in the back, six stitches in the back. Then it says two in the front, one in the back. So that's slightly different than what we've been doing. It's mirrored, so now you have to put another two on the other side of the sonic screwdriver. And then seven in the back. And our end stitch is also in the back. Row 74, the right side is facing us. The accent color tails are here in the front. We're going to chain three and our first stitch goes in the front. Then we have six in the back. Maybe I said it in the first video. I'm not sure if I said it in this video yet. Why am I showing this repetitive when they're like all the same? Why do I keep showing it all? And it's because I wanted you to be able to crochet with me. You can just press play. You can slow it down if you need to. YouTube has those magical controls and you can say, oh, I need this one to be slowed down at, you know, 0.75% speed or something. And then you can just crochet with me and I'm not going to skip stitches because then you'd have to pause the video. So we are doing this one here at all going to be six in the back and now six in the front again. So we've changed it, but it's the same as this. Just make sure you're getting the right windows so everything is lined up. And you need to set it down and straighten all the squares, that's fine, it happens, and it helps, then you gotta do it. And after we are done these six here, we've got five left for the back. Whoops, my tension is being weirdo. One, two, three, four, Five. Then we have one in the front, and an end stitch on the side. This will be the last row for this video, then you'll have to move on to part three. Chain three here for row 75, and put six in the front. And this row is slightly different than the other ones, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 
And you see it doesn't actually line up here because we are changing things. Now we're going to put two in the back. Our next stitch, one in the front, one in the back, then it's mirrored, so this one's going to be in the front again, then two in the back, and five in the front. So make sure you're not doubling up. Make sure you're counting your stitches proper. This one has already been used by that one in the back. I think that's another common mistake that people make. And our end stitch in the front window there we go. So you'll have to come see us at the next video to continue along and we will see you soon. <music>